Hey, it's Galita here, and I wanted to tell you a story about what happened to me today, and there's a message in it for all of us. So um, I woke up this morning, and I, and I looked on my altar. There's lots of things there, and there, there's a picture of uh, my grandfather and me. It's my favorite picture. Uh, there's something in it that is uh, reminding me where I'm from, and it's really, uh, it's really my heart. My grandparents are it's really my biggest part of my heart. So I, I'll show you the picture and I'll tell you what happened and what I'm concluding for all of us. So this is my grandfather. And I realized, I always thought that it was filmed in one wall. Uh, but then suddenly I realized that it was on another wall of the farm. Um, uh, and I had a very special relationship with my grandfather. Uh, he, he, you know, you know, um, men of his generation and he, he's of culture, you know, girls are something you kind of tolerate until you get to the boy. Uh, but I was the first born. But there was a middle click with us, as you have with souls that you come to be born with. Um, um, and, and, and there is something that accompanied us our whole life. So I was looking at this picture and I didn't, didn't think anything special. Uh, then I was looking at some diaries because I'm going through some of the material that I wrote in the past because I'm writing a book and I put things together. And I'm opening it in a diary that is half empty and I go, why did I keep this one? I didn't see it for so long. And it was 2003 and I was looking and I saw something that I wrote. Uh, which was very interesting. So I, I wrote, uh, I was then um, performing as a musician in, in, the, in a theater performance in Holland that was touring through farms. So I came to Holland and I lived in uh, Amsterdam and I was with my beloved, I had a child. Uh, my life was very much in Amsterdam. It's like very multicultural, uh, very, very international, very world citizen kind of city. And going outside to the countryside is always a very different experience, uh, of course. Uh, but in, in this production, I got to see uh, different farms in Holland. And it really touched my heart because I realized people who have a farm the way that I grew up, uh, there's some things always the same. It uh, doesn't matter what religion, what culture you are. There's something really amazing about being connected to the earth and oh, into uh, the animals, into the routine, into the season and all these things. So it was wonderful. But in that production, something, something was coming out that a little bit broke my heart. And I was reading myself, reading that, because I forgot it was a long time ago. And in there, I was talking about that in that production, it was a Pierre Gint production, um, uh, there were the actors and there were the musicians, and I was one of the musicians. And what I did in that production was something that I still trying to find a place for it in the world because uh, some of the music that we were composing or creating was channeled on the moment. Um, and I thought the director was very innovative in his way of thinking. But the people who are uh, the actors, uh, they were all Dutch establishment. Um, and they also thought highly of themselves, God help me. Um, and we, the musicians, uh, we were dark skinned and uh, well, at least two of us. Uh, and we were like not from the elite of the actors. And I remember that I always could not put together how a person can be an artist, but be unconscious or not spiritual, because I think it's the same. Like if you open yourself to spirituality, you are, you are, um, you, you, you are an artist. And if you're an artist, you open yourself to spirituality. I don't see the difference. Oh, but okay, this was a lot of status and a lot of, um, you, know, you know, try to be important. And we the musicians, we, we had to be in a, in a kind of in the moment kind of reaction. We had to react to the energy. Uh, and create what we were creating. Later, a few years later, with one of the musicians there, I recorded the, the album The 13, 
and I did the same thing. We came together, we worked, we meditated, and we are we channeled for a whole weekend thing, thirteen um, uh, grandmothers of, of of the divine feminine. So it was the beginning of me realizing, oh my, my God, there's so much power in music that is not composed ahead of time, but it is channeled. Uh, you can also say improvised, which which is pretty pretty interesting the line between those two okay let me go back to the story so then i was reading that my heart was broken because i was feeling inferior and and um, you know it, it was not a nice environment to work in i'm sorry to say um, i don't think anybody will remember it was a long time ago but then the day after it was like the 9th of may 2003 and my entry is starting with how the premiere happened and how excited I am and how happy I am and something. And then while I'm reading, I suddenly remember what happened. So I'll tell you what happened. I, we were outside of the room where we were performing. It was a farm. So one farm room was converted for the performance. We were outside and we were in a preparation to start and of course it's nerve wracking, and, but we had a very good rehearsal where I really felt in total alignment with, uh, with everything, with all of the actor, actors and musicians and the earth and all of the goats that were there. It was a goat farm and I grew up with goats. I love goats. Uh, it was something like really good. And while I was waiting outside, I was looking into the, I was looking into the horizon. Of course it's Holland, so it's all flat. Um, and I have a little bit of aching to the farm of my family. We kind of lost. It was one of the reasons I kind of uh, uprooted myself and went to look for life somewhere else. I could not handle that pain. So suddenly I'm sensing my grandfather, Hein, who died six years before. Uh, and some part of my reality collapsed when he died because he was like my connection to something. Um, that is still with me. It's something which probably we'll call ancestors. And this is what I would like to 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 talk about later. So what happened in this moment of kind of meditation is that my grandfather suddenly came to me and he said to me something that I would never expect to hear in, in while he was alive because of cultural different languages, different religious different. Suddenly his soul was saying to me, how proud he is of me that I follow my dreams and um, that he supports me. And the way that he looked was so good and vibrant. And I was worried about him, of course, because I could not connect with him for, for a while. And I knew that he's going through some life reviews and I know some things. And spiritually, I, I was working with that energy and protecting my family and all this kind of shamanic kind of work. So I knew some stuff, but in the vision, he was like beautifully uh, alive and well and, and, and standing there behind me uh, and telling me that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. He was kind of affirming to me in a way, in a very fatherly way, uh, what I needed then. Because you know I'm outside, I'm away from my country, I'm away from my family, I'm embarking on something new, feeling inferior with those people. It's a little bit, uh, and then you have to sing, you know, you have to sing out of your heart. You have to feel safe, and it was not feeling safe. I tried to find myself in it. Uh, so that was such an amazing experience of a total alignment. Suddenly I was totally in my body, in these goat farms. I love goats. They are completely an animal that I'm connected to. And, uh, and then the performance was amazing and I could do my work and we got flowers and you know, the Dutch are very good with that. Uh, and I finished the performance feeling that I found my place and it was all, yeah, it was amazing. So I, I, I was very emotional. So I light a candle. Uh, I have a morning practice anyway, so light a candle and I sat down and I connected to this feeling. And then my grandfather, which really died so long time ago, 
and I have his picture with me and uh, oh God, it's so hard when you lose somebody, it doesn't matter the time, you miss like holding their hands and, and suddenly it was very vivid in my meditation that he came telling me, telling me that I do have fatherly support. Because I was just talking the time before that, that I feel I have no foundation to embark on what I want to do. So I had an amazing, beautiful meditation where I, my grandfather came in and he's the father of my father. I have more connection to my mother and to her family, but I kind of balanced myself out. It's part of the things I'm writing about. But And then all of his father and his father's father and his father's father came like in a line to show me that they are present that blew me away <laughs> because if you know me or my work i always talk about my grandmothers my two amazing very different grandmothers and i work with ancestors and i work with healing and i work with healing of ourselves healing of, of woundedness in the collective or woundedness of the jewish people of women of artists of uh, yemenite people all of those things I never, never had that side of the family coming to show me support. Oh my God, I was blown away. And on top of it, the only memory I had from this family line is like years ago when I was working on healing, of course, it was all like, oh, my work in the world is to prove myself, to clean the collective thing. I, I was coming to a point where I was not allowed to speak out. I was not allowed to sing publicly see the connection and I was working with one of my healer friends and we went into the past and, we went and, and then I came into that I have signed a contract in my family line in my DNA the father's side of my father's family I was under a contract that women it's also a little bit in our religion that women are not allowed to show themselves in public it's like uh, doesn't matter what you believe is what is there, but a woman's beauty is hidden, and a woman manifestation of work is the in, invisible, which is true, of course. If you know my work, then I, you know, the yin and the yang, the feminine is. A, but in that family line, there was some kind of a heavy contracts and oh, 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 that I agreed never to show my color and my voice too much, or not at all, actually. So I had to go back into this healing and go into my father things and to and to clean that. It was it literally went through me and my brother, and my father. And so the only association I had with that line of the family is that they put me down and put women, our women down, not to be too bright, not to be too talented, not to be too outspoken. Um, that kind of stuff oh my god so almost everyone that i work with that have uh blockages on their chakra or they're not allowed to express it's uh, lots of women have that a lot we have something in our dna we have something in our family that is agreed for it it's something that humans did so it exists so suddenly when this family came it was uh it was life affirming. And I felt that the grandfathers of all of us, the grandfathers are making themselves known. And the funny thing that few days before I wrote, uh, I, I wrote a, um, a blog. And when I said that the mothers, because I work a lot with the mothers, the mothers, earth mothers, uh, that they are coming and asking us to work with healing in this time when it is suddenly there was this appearance of the father. Of course, of course, was my grandfather, but on the collective, there's this energy of the grandfathers coming to say, we are coming to assist you with the grandmothers. So all of my work is about the, <laughs> the unity of the masculine and feminine. That was so amazing. So the message for us is, first, if you have a memory or a connection to any of your grandfathers, that I would like you to look if there is 
something that you can reconnect to because there is some kind of a gift, some kind of a um, present, some kind of a spark that is asking you to receive it and to integrate it in yourself. So you can go through this time and you can find a way to contribute your own thing into where we're going. And of course, we all feel we don't know where we're going, but we do have the grandmothers and we do have the grandfathers as an archetype also to help us anchor uh, ourselves, our light into this earth. So I would like you to make a connection or to one of your grandfathers or to the grandfather archetype in yourself or in something in your family line. And because there is a lot of upheaval now, uh, I also felt a lot of people who have a grandfather that did something horrific in their eyes. Uh, it's time to, to, to reconnect and heal that. So I, I know a person who her grandfather was a Nazi sympathizer. Uh, she's a beautiful soul uh, and her light is beyond measure, but she was born to this family line because God knows what is the reason, but there are spiritual reasons why she chose that. Uh, and maybe her ability to be so lovingly vibrating and, and integrating forgiveness and and absorbing uh, trauma from other nations and tribes and things that her father heard, um, grandfather heard, can, can be integrated now. Uh, and what's the most amazing thing, that if you have that in your family, you will, uh, and you will connect to these ancestors of you that, that did horrific things. And, and let's remember, on the biggest picture of soul, we all, we all, did light and dark work. If you are evolved, if you are compassionate, if you are a light worker, star seed, it's because you already experienced both the duality. So let's let's understand that the way forward is expanding our consciousness and expanding our forgiveness. So if you will connect to an ancestor that did horrible things, you will you will see that they're in their soul evolution, they're already in a different place. And sometimes we need to bring it into our life in order to heal things in our family line. So if you want to connect to the energy of the grandfather, which is coming to help you to, so the, the mother's helping us to anchor and to nurture and to manifest. And, and the grandfather's energy is coming to ignite our spark uh, in order for us to bring something forward. Um, it's a very wonderful energy to have um, a, a healthy balance between your, your inner queen or the grandmothers and your inner king or the grandfathers. So I feel that something is now stepping up and the message is call your grandfathers and your grandmothers in order to anchor yourself in this time when we are absolutely going through a heartbreak and shift and totally collapsing of belief systems, uh, especially of our ancestors. So we are shifting. So take them with you into that shift. That's what I want to say. So when I finished my meditation, I, I went downstairs and uh, we wanted to take a, a, to have a walk with the dog in the park. Um, so I didn't really realize yet. And I was looking into my phone. I didn't, I, I sometimes divorce my phone. And then I saw that yesterday, the day before, my father, I have, a, I, have a, I have a funny relationship with my father. My father is this kind of a special being. <laughs> it took me years to learn how to handle uh, that. Uh, so we have very little communication. Um, but on my Facebook page, my, grand, my father, who I always considered like my big brother because my grandfather was my father. My father was kind of young at heart. He's, he's, he's a bit different. Um, uh, I'm learning to appreciate some things only later in life, as, as most of you know. But he left me a message because I think he doesn't understand the difference between writing on the wall of Facebook or, or sending you a personal message. He's, you know, 72, um, looking like he's 45. 
it's also weird. Uh, but um, so he left me a message saying to my sweet daughter, I, I, I am so proud of you that you are going to fulfilling your dreams. Health is all that is important. That's like my father's statement, you know, kind of statement. And I was like, oh, sweet, on my, on my homepage, on my, on, on my wall, fine. I, I wrote, thank you, back. But when I walked in the park, suddenly I was going like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> they were like, oh, synchronicity, of course. My father, writing me this unexpected love message, just after his father came with all the fluff men in his family to come and to declare uh, their support to me voicing myself in the world and uh, sharing my, my, my knowledge that also come from my ancestors and wisdom and healing and love and all these things all of them want to share. And I was going like, that's amazing. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to start by making a video where I tell the story instead of just tell it to my husband. <laughs> I tell him, sometimes all my stories are wasted and you have to record it just so I can share it with other people. Because maybe you can, you can bring another piece into your being that will give you this feeling of wholeness and take you forward to where your soul wants to go. So that's what I want to share. And I want to say hi to my grandfather. His name is Chaim, um, which means life. Um, and he always looked very different than all the other grandfathers. So, so yeah, there's so much love. There's so much love uh, with the people we love and uh, the souls that accompany us in the other side and here. So I want to send a lot of love to all of you uh, and to all your ancestors and bring your grandfathers and grandmother together so you can manifest yourself in the best way possible, because that's what we need from you. We need you to be heard, we need you to be seen, we need you to be shine and bring the light of healing into yourself, into your life, so we can all make this planet go to the next level. So thank you.